here today. I know some of you probably sacrificed to be here. Uh, had no power at your home, and some of you no water, and you made it here anyway, and I thank you for that. That takes a, a lot of get up and go, and I appreciate you doing that. It's funny, I had this message long before the storm got here. Or just spoke. Reading out of Revelation 19. I love that chapter, one of my favorite chapters. John writes, and after this I heard what seemed to be a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah. I, uh, took the time to look that word up. First part of it is a derivative that simply means praise, praise the Lord, bless the Lord. And the last part of it uh, is a word that came from his uh, name, Yahweh. So it's like, hallelujah, praise Yahweh, praise God. So they say it six times in these few verses that I'll read it. Six times the word hallelujah is used. I heard of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah, praise Yahweh. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for His judgments are true and just. For He has judged the great prostitute who had corrupted the earth with her immorality. Nothing goes unnoticed. And has avenged on her the blood of His servants. And once more they cried out, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude like the roar of many waters and like the sound of a mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah. For the Lord our God Almighty reigns. Yes. Let us result, rejoice and exult and give him the glory. <clears throat> For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. That's a fantastic chapter. Because it, it talks about the power of God. In light of all that has taken place in the last few years, when you look at the earthquakes, the famines, and the wars, and the economy, and the housing market, and the stock trading scandals, and scandals in the government, you name it, it seems to have been in our news. <clears throat> and what little news I watch, it looks like it's getting worse. But I've dropped by to tell you something today. I want to tell you three things that John's Word presents to us here. I want to talk about the unique theme of this proclamation. I want to talk about the universal testimony of His power and I want to talk about the ultimate tribute to his person. The unique theme of this proclamation is that he reigns no matter what. I don't care who's in the White House or the poor house. I don't care what's going on in the world today. My God reigns. I know he's going to take care of it. Sometimes it don't look like it. The timing of this proclamation is, is so fantastic. He says, and after these things. It looked like there was no after. I mean, the world, by the time Revelation 19 appears, the, revelation, the, the, the world looks like a disaster. I mean, things are really, really bad. If we look at chapters 11 and 12 and 13, we look at things like we, we have the blood, we have the terror, we have the horrible holocaust, we have the revelation of the Antichrist, we have the mark of the beast, the torture, the hunger, the devastation, 
We've got horse of blood to the horse's bridles. I mean, that's terrible. The sun is burning and blistering and baking. It, it almost seems like nature has gone into convulsions. And it looks like the night will never end. <clears throat> there seems to be no end to the turmoil of what's going on. But all of a sudden, you hear John say, and after these things. Oh, I don't know about you, church, but I thank God there's always a blessed after. Yes. After the night, after the weeping, after the struggles, after all of that, you have to remember the storm is not going to last forever. There comes a blessed after. I woke up like many of you did probably around 2 o'clock in the morning and seemed like the storm was at its height. Wind was blowing, sounded like it was going to take the house down. Trees were falling, things were happening. I rode out of my neighborhood, gates were, were uh, fences were tore down. I mean, it was looked like a war zone. They tell me other areas around us are even worse. Lights were out. No, no, that morning, no red lights or signal lights. People left to do what they could. Uh, linemen out all night working. Looks like the storm would never end. I had a generator. I wanted to crank it up, but I wasn't going out at 2 o'clock in the morning to do it. So we just laid there and sweated like everybody else did. But I kept thinking, will the morning ever come? It seemed like that night was 24 hours. I wondered if it would ever get daylight, ever get light enough to get out and get the generator going. And it finally came. It's like John is saying here. He's saying, hallelujah, to praise be the God that almighty reigns. Let the storms blow. Let the bad times come. God still reigns. Now, this is not just whistling in the dark. This is faith in the promises of God. After the weeping, God says, comes the joy. After the sowing comes the harvest. After the groaning comes the laughter. There's a blessed after for the child of God in this devastated world that we live in. I don't know about all of the theatrics that go along with this and people talk about the eschatology and what is and what ain't. I know one thing. I know one thing. That after all of this, John said he reigned. After all of the blood, the bridle, all of that, John said, he reigns. Yes. John is watching it unfold, but he knows one thing, that even after all of this devastation, God still reigns. Church, I'm here to tell you, I just dropped by to tell you this morning, whatever you're going by won't last forever. Whatever you're going through won't last forever. There comes a blessed after for the church, for the child of God. There comes a time when you wake up and God is there there, rain it. In this devastated world that we live in, we have to have a promise of God. I'll be the first to tell you, the headlines are bleak. I was telling them in the first service, I, I don't watch a whole lot of news, but I was somewhere the other day, and they announced that they have four new churches in, in the United States that have church without God. I told them that wasn't nothing. I knew a lot of churches that didn't have God. <laughs> like the way you shout now. <laughs> but they, it was a godless church. They had church. They had a group. They had singing. They had people together. They sang. I don't know what they sang, but I'm, I'm guessing they didn't sing Christian songs. And they called it a church without God. I thought, my Lord, we've really seen it bad now when they have a church. And somebody told me a while ago that one church split off of them because they wasn't, they wasn't atheist enough. I don't know if you, how you can get more atheists and not have God in a church. I'm going to tell you, things are bad. Things are bleak. We look around and wonder how long God will put up with it. And my answer is, I don't know, but I do know this. He still reigns. 
They can have all the church they want to. They can call him out. They can not use him. They can curse his name. He still reigns. Whatever you're going through this morning, understand he still reigns. You see here the thunder. You see the waters. The great multitudes are all repeating one thing. The Lord God Almighty reigns. You cannot get away from that. That is the theme of this proclamation. John is saying, hey, look at all that's happened, but God is still in control. It doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to tell you the day after election day, I don't care who fills that White House. I just know who fills that throne, and he still reigns. We often ask, will the, will the night ever get through with? I used to camp out when a little boy when I was a little boy and it seemed like the night would never come in the morning. I got news for you. It will end. Because in the face of defeat, the church can talk victory. In the face of weakness, we talk about strength. In the times of of of, of, of sickness, we talk healing. In the times of the valley, in the face of the valley, we talk about the mountaintops because we know one thing, that that night is going to end because Jesus told us, God told us, joy comes in the morning. There's a new day tomorrow. The sun's coming up, and God's going to take care of it. He still reigns. You look back at the darkest hours and moments of your life, The very fact that you're still here, the very fact that you're still in this church worshiping God, still loving on Him, is a a testament to the power of His greatness. That He kept you through that dark time. I was telling the early service when I had a motorcycle wreck, some of you don't, but I had a terrible motorcycle wreck back in 2009. My left leg was mangled. It got caught between a car and my 800-pound Harley and just bones shot through the side of my leg, right above my ankle, two bones shot through there. It was a terrible time. And, and uh, I was in the back of the ambulance, and the guy said, give me your phone. I'll call your wife. I said, oh, no, you ain't calling my wife. I'm calling my wife. And I told her, I said, honey, I... I had a wreck on the way to work this morning. I'd never had a motorcycle wreck. I've been riding almost 50 years. And she said, are you hurt? I said, well, I think I may have broke my leg. And when I got to the hospital, there she was. And Pastor Branson lived in that area. And he came over. And when they took me out of the ambulance, my leg was in a, in a, a some kind of a trough or bag. And it was full of blood. She said, I thought you broke your leg. I said, did, but the bones came through the side. <coughs> And the first thing I heard from the doctor when he came in to see me, he said, looks like we're probably going to take your leg off. I said, oh, no, we're not taking my leg off. I'm going to tell you it was a dark time. That was just the beginning of it. For the next several months, I had three surgeries. I had to learn to walk again. I was so beaten down and and devastated. I, I, I walked into... I took a walker when I first could, after the first surgery, and I went in to see my motorcycle, and they had fixed it up, and the girl said, Pastor, somebody wants to buy it. you want to sell it? I just kind of turned my head, and I said, sell it, and I walked out. I felt terrible. I went home. I had a second surgery, and they repaired the second bone and put it back with a rod in it. I couldn't get up and down. People were having to wait on me. I just felt like night was 24,000 years long. I couldn't do anything. Teresa would have to wait on me. Well, that didn't change much. But (laughs) I remember asking her one morning before the third surgery, I said, will this ever end? She said, yeah, but not today. They called me back in when the swelling went down and looked at my knee. It was blown out. They put new ACL and PCL ligaments and side lateral ligaments in my leg and told me it was cadaver uh, grafts. And I said, well, I hope they're saved because when I go to heaven, I want my leg to go with me. (laughs) I laugh about it now, but I got news for you. I was worried 
they kept telling me the whole time if, if I got infection, there was a high percentage. He said it's probably like 99% you're going to get infection, which will lead to amputation. And I went through all of those surgeries, and I went through all of that, and never once got Never once got infection. Never once got infection. But I thought to myself, will this ever end? There will come another day. There will come another time. We have to remember and know like John did, hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty reigns no matter what happens I'm going to tell you, that's my miracle, but you need your miracle because God says now faith is a substance. And so you need that kind of now moment in your life where if you're facing devastation or you're facing kind of things that are going the wrong way and you're looking and going, will this ever end? Will it ever go away? I want to remind you, it will end. It will come to pass. God's going to take care of it, which brings me to my second point. I look at the universal testimony to his power. Not about me. It's about him. It's about what he's able to do. Do you remember when Jesus went into Cana, his very first miracle? And he went in and he turned the water into wine. And we say, wow, that was something. They ran out of wine at the marriage and they usually would serve the best, and then as the wedding would go on, they would serve the last. But when Jesus turned that water into wine, it was the better wine, better than had, they had had the whole time. And the word that John uses for, for miracle or, or sign is miracle. And so all the other, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all of them, they talk about his miracles. They talk about in relation to compassion or concern or care. But when John uses the word sign for miracle, he's telling about what Christ is. He's showing us both history and prophecy. He's saying it doesn't matter what comes. God is still powerful enough to take care of anything. And he's what he did at Cana of Galilee. He's going to do 10,000 times 10,000 again. He's doing it for his church today. He's keeping the best for last. He's pouring out his spirit, his experience, even today. We're experiencing this all over the world. Things look like they're devastated. They're falling apart. Things are happening. But I'm going to tell you, the church of Jesus Christ is still moving forward because God is still has the power to take care of it. I talk to my friends and missionaries who tell me things are tough. Things are happening. They can't even say a word about Christ for fear of their life but God is still showing his power the church is still growing God will show his power and his omnipotence he is all powerful God has still got it you see when John talks about uh, things like the leper when Jesus touches the leper he doesn't contract leprosy the leper contracts Jesus' help. All of a sudden, he's, he's healed. Because every disease to know, knows, and, and I'm sure we do, that Jesus reigns. And the prophecy is that when we come in contact with Jesus, we contact his eternal life. He doesn't come and take the sin out of us and us die. He con we contact his eternal life. We all of a sudden become life livers in Jesus. The prophecy tells us. It's kind of like the Sea of Galilee. How quickly the rains and the winds and things can happen. But Jesus just kind of comes on the scene. Why do you think he puts all of those things in the Bible? He's reminding us of his power. He's reminding us of miracles that we can have in our life. Everyone has a Galilee in their, in their home or in their life at one time or another. It's good to know that God is still reigning and powerful. I was thinking the other day, Teresa and I pastored in, uh, way up in North Georgia. And one morning we were having church. The church was just, looked like on fire. We'd been there just 
a short time, and the church had grown from like 60 to 200 in like two months. It was just, we had people everywhere. Every pew was full. The parking lots were full. We were having revival. All of a sudden, right up front, there was a man, an older man, and his wife that used to sit there. They're wonderful people. And I saw him just slump over. So I motioned, and some people went to check on him. The choir was still singing. They ran, checked on him. One of them looked at me and said, Pastor, he's dead. I said, we can't find any vital signs. They called an ambulance. I didn't mention it this morning, but we had a choir. They began to sing. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. And we got down there and prayed for that gentleman. And just a little bit, his eyes popped open. And all of a sudden, he sit right up. And they said, we got an ambulance outside. He said, I don't need no ambulance. And, uh, and, God, and he lived for several years after that. God just did a miracle. Right in the I had medical people tell him he's dead. There is no vital sign. And I remember the choir saying, we've got the power. I want to tell you something today, church. John speaks in his writings of Lazarus, and he tells of his death, and he talks about how he stands out in front of his tomb, and they roll the stone back, and he cries out, Lazarus, come to bed and walk to bed. Do 10,000, 10,000. Is gonna, God is going to be in. I'm going to tell you, even when Jesus speaks to Lazarus and says, Come out, or that he wept, I tell you, there's even then a tomorrow. In God is still powerful. We have decided he can't do what he used to do, but I can tell you, he will. He's still God. That's an ultimate. Tribute to him. The third your focus on that he. He. I wanted her to say that. He reigns. It is not. Still not. A, he's. A, in the midst. In, in, the, in the midst of. And, and problems and. He's going to reign. He is still reigning. He will always reign. In the midst of Hollywood trying to make people believe that he's less than deity and they're fighting against him, let me tell you, he still reigns. And one day every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow and say, He is Lord. He shall reign. He is reigning. He will forever reign. I don't care what this world does. They can't change that fact. They can't change one bit of what's going to take place. That I don't even need to preach on it. He's going to take care of it. One day the flag of Emmanuel will fly over every domain, every city, every county, every state, every country, everything, every nation. It'll say he is reigning he will reign he will run all of this he tells us no more sorrow no more crying no more pain no more dying he'll live and reign forever and forever and forever and all of the forevers hereafter God is going to take care of it if you're in a storm right now if you're in a place that you wonder how you're going to get out of it I want to remind you today God still reigns John reminds us, after all of the devastation, after all of the problems, he still reigns. I'm here to tell you that today. We've been through a tough time the last few days, but he still reigns. We've been without power, but he still reigns. Some are still out, but we still reign. He still reigns, and he will forever. John writes chapter 19 almost like, A pep talk to a teen. Guys, don't give in, give up, or give out. He still reigns. I love what the old songwriter said when he said it best. All hail the power of Jesus' name. 
Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. He repeats it. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Oh, can I remind you this morning, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of what's going on, he still reigns. Hallelujah. Six times. Hallelujah. But that last time, hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty reigns. John is saying, listen, all of this is just a blip. He still reigns. What you're going through may seem like a disaster to you, but he still reigns. Whatever you're going through today, he still reigns. Let me tell you something. I got a left leg today to prove he still reigns. He still reigns. Father, I don't know who's going through a devastation this morning. What that devastation may look like, that storm Not just the physical storms that we've seen the last few days, but the storms of life. Some may be going through financial or even physical storms, and they don't know and can't understand. But I just remind them, I can't help you, but he can. He still reigns. Lord, no matter what comes my way, no matter what befalls my attention, he still reigns. Hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty reigns, and he will reign forever. So, Lord, I pray for them that are in the storms this morning. I pray for them that, God, you will show up and show out. You will show them and remind them continuously. There's nothing got more power than you. There's not anything that's going to devastate you. You reign forever.